Welcome back to the channel. I'm RJ Ronquillo. If you're new here, thanks for joining us. Happy uh, belated new year. It's 2019. So at the beginning of every year, I kind of like to declutter and kind of clean up the mess that I made the previous year. And while I was uh, cleaning up in my basement, I came across an old plastic crate full of my old CD collection. Now, I honestly haven't opened this container in probably over 10 years. I'm curious to open it up, but I figured I would kind of share it with you guys. A, I think it would be an interesting look at what I used to listen to in high school and college in my early adult years and kind of see what uh, influenced me on my journey to where I am now as far as my musical tastes and uh, the way I play and all that stuff. This is the music that I had around before I bought the first generation iPod, which was, I don't even know when, early 2000s. It might have even been uh, before some of you were born. God, that makes me feel old. Let me drag it out. Jesus. I think this is why we stream music now. Holy shit. How many of y'all remember these Case Logic booklets? I got one, two, three, four, and then I got a whole bunch of jewel cases at the bottom of this thing. This first booklet was always my main booklet. Dave Matthews Band. You know, I went to college in the 90s and DMB was big. I haven't listened to Dave Matthews in a while. Oh God, what else? My favorite Detroit bands from the past, Big Chief. So the cover art was done by the Big Chief guitarist, Mark Dancy, who also did uh, Bad Motor Finger, which is a great Soundgarden album. Velvet Underground, Cheap Trick, Live at Budokan. Smashing Pumpkins, Gish, you gotta have Journey. Allman Brothers Band. In high school and in college, I was a huge Allman Brothers fan. I saw them like four or five times in high school. This, I know I bought in high school. This was Tower of Powers, self-titled record. Very funky stuff. Remember when we used to have to burn CDs? Napster and LimeWire and I would just download all this. I was bad. You know, everyone was doing it, right? This is my hairband mix. Number two, got Winger 17. When I See You Smile, that was uh, bad English. That's a great tune. Born To Be My Baby, Bon Jovi, Love Bites, Def Leppard, Final Countdown, Baby Don't Treat Me Bad. Who was that? This could... Firehouse? Was that Firehouse? Ballad of Jane, LA Guns, Love Them Still, Just Take My Heart. Just Take My Heart. Mr. Big, Down. I don't know if you remember Down, but that was like Phil Anselmo from Pantera, Pepper Keenan from Corrosion of Conformity. Let us take a little listen back into 92, 93. And right next to it in total contrast, Jerry Garcia Acoustic Band. This was definitely not my CD. I think this was my sister's. My sister was the bigger deadhead than I was. Honestly, never listened to this. Budgie. In for the kill. This is the Helicasters Escape from Hollywood album. I think this was the second record that they put out. Look at that. That's cool, man. You have to admit, that is a cool design. Sepultura. Miseducation of Lorne Hill. Disc, uh, disky. Dixie Dregs. So Guitar Player Magazine had put out a series of CDs, Legends of Guitar, Legends of Guitar Surf, and Legends of Guitar Country. If you've heard me play in the past couple years, you probably know that I'm influenced by this stuff. Jim Messina and his jesters. So Jim Messina is actually the Jim Messina from Loggins and Messina. So he had a surf band called the jesters. That's a badass melody. And right next to it, I have another uh, surf compilation. Yeah, I was a big uh, surf music fan back in the day. I still am. Danny Gatton, 88 Elmira Street. His playing was so innovative. This is some college stuff. Government Mule, Widespread Panic. Yeah, I was kind of like a big quasi jam band hippie type guy. Busta Rhymes, yes. As a guitar player, you listen to a lot of guitar related music, but sometimes you kind of get sick of it and you want to hear other stuff. And I love hip hop. I don't really like the new stuff. This Vi record, I remember when it came out. Sex and Religion with uh, Devin Townsend singing who's actually a really awesome guitar player as well. Ooh, it's got a, it's got a poster. Okay, this was 1993, so I was still in high school. I'm not gonna tell you my age, you can figure it out. You can make fun of me all you want, but I dug this Indigo Girls record. Swamp Ophelia, Fugitive, Least Complicated, Language or the Kiss, Power of Two. That would get me in the feels, that song. Multiply life by the power of two. 
I'm not gonna make you listen to it, but I'm gonna listen to it later in the privacy of my own car so I can cry. Um, what else? Helmet. This is a great record from the 90s. Paige Hamilton with the ESP. A lot of reggae too. Uh, Bob Marley, Jimmy Cliff, Spin Doctors. You gotta have this record. If you were a kid or a teenager in the 90s, pocket full of kryptonite. I was actually heavily influenced by the guitar playing. Eric Schenkman, he has some really awesome solos on this record. Really melodic. Super interesting to listen to. When I was touring with Inner Circle, the reggae band in the early 2000s, we played a couple uh, shows with the Spin Doctors. I got to talk to all of them and meet them. And I remember telling Eric specifically that he was a big influence on my playing uh, when I was in high school. So, of course, I got uh, some Black Sabbath. Oh, this record. This first Archangels record. If you don't remember the Archangels, this was uh, Doyle Bramhall II, Charlie Sexton, and then uh, Double Trouble. So you have uh, Chris Layton and um, Tommy Shannon. So it was kind of like a super group. What is it? 92. Yeah. This was a record that I listened to every single song. Just the songwriting, the singing, the guitar playing. This looks like this is all jazz. Coltrane, Jim Hall, Ron Carter duo. This is a great record. John Schofield, Wayne Krantz. Okay, as a guitar player in college, Wayne Krantz, Two Drink Minimum. 55 bar, I think, uh, where he plays a lot in New York City. <laughs> A lot of my um, fusion-y playing was influenced by this record. Miles Davis, Joe Pass, big influence on my chordal solo guitar playing. A lot of Wes Montgomery, Kenny Burrell. Oh, this one. Uh, this was a record by uh, Gray Sargent. Gray Sargent uh, became Tony Bennett's guitar player. <laughs> I need to um, hip you guys to this record and to his playing because he was probably my favorite jazz guitar player uh, high school into college. There was some some kind of greasiness and some soul to it. Here we go now. Hank Garland, Jazz Winds from A New Direction. This is an amazing album. Uh, if you don't know Hank Garland, he was a pretty famous Nashville session player. <laughs> But he also was a burning jazz player and he recorded this record. Oh yeah, Joe Morello on drums, Gary Burton on the vibes, Joe Benjamin on bass. Amazing guitar player. He played fast and he played clean. Larry Carlton, Grant Green. The Velvet Touch of Lenny Bro. This was a cool record. I remember hearing this in college. Really uh, amazing finger picking. Mike Stern, standards. Here's another big one. Chili Peppers, Blood. Sugar Sex Magic. In the late 90s, there was a big swing revival. Brian Setzer Orchestra was kind of leading the pack. He did a cover of uh, Jump Jive and Whale, which is an old uh, Louis Prima song. It was on MTV. <laughs> Chet Atkins. So I live in Nashville now, but some of you may not know that I was considering moving to Nashville right out of college in 1999. My senior year of college, for some reason, I got really into 90s pop country. I wanted to be Dan Huff. I wanted to be Brent Mason. You gotta have Shania, Clint Black, nothing but the taillights, and Deanna Carter, man. Here's a good jazz guitar record. Uh, Johnny Smith featuring Stan Getz. So Johnny Smith plays Walk Don't Run, which most of you may know as a song that the Ventures do, but I believe he did the, I believe he's the originator. Steve Ray Vaughan, Texas Flood. You gotta have this record. You gotta have this record. I had this on cassette and then I lost it, so I bought the CD. Edwin McCain. Here's another record that if you were young in the late 90s, then you heard that one song that he did all the time. Charlie Hunter. I was a big Charlie Hunter fan in college. Bing, 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 ready, set, shango. His ability to play bass and guitar at the same time was so cool and, and groove. <laughs> Now we're getting into the, the important stuff. Kiss. Quad City DJs. Quad City DJs? Who the hell? Oh! Derek Trucks, Out of the Madness. Wow, this, is a, this was a young Derek Trucks. Joe Jackson, Look Sharp. Some of the best songs ever 
written and recorded. Mark Rebo, Ribo, y los cubanos postizos. I remember watching TV. I think the show was called Sessions at West 54th. I believe David Byrne was actually hosting it. But I remember seeing Mark Ribo playing and it was so cool. He was taking like traditional Cuban music and just making it his own. And one of the things I copped from that performance was he would use a 12 string guitar, a 12 string acoustic to mimic the sound of like a Cuban cuatro or tres. If you've seen my Dan Electro video that I just posted of the 12 string, that's where I got it from. Satriani, Eric Johnson, and Vi. I think this is the first G3 record. Gotta have some Andy Timmons. This, I believe I sent out for. I think I had, had to uh, buy via snail mail. Gotta have this record, D'Angelo Voodoo. Tribal Tech, yes. Look at that hair. Scott Henderson, Gary Willis. This is such a 90s cover too, I mean, the clothing obviously is very 90s. And then it's purple and orange. Bill Frizzell, here we go, Brent Mason. This is what I wanted to be and moved to Nashville uh, in the late 90s. Now I'm not really a chicken picker these days. Bunch of randoms. We got uh, Morris Day in the Time. Def Leppard, High and Dry. How to Speak Japanese, ooh. Classic Hound Dog Taylor. I got Hound Dog Taylor's uh, six fingered hand tattooed on my arm. Soul Live. Oh, cool. A compilation record that I was on. Still in its, uh, Packaging. In the days of MySpace, I had a one-man band called Lonesome Joseph. You could probably Google it and find it on Spotify or iTunes or whatever. These were all my MySpace friends. <clears throat> Here's another, the slide guitar it's called. It's just a compilation of acoustic slide guitar. Barbecue Bob, Tampa Red, Charlie Patton, Robert Johnson, Bucka White. 2003, John Mayer put out this live album called Any Given Thursday. It was basically his, the stuff from his first record. I believe this is probably when he started transitioning into his persona as an electric guitar player. You know, he put out that trio album playing more blues stuff, Outkast. Okay, here's a record that I totally don't remember buying. It's a Tool record, it still has the old uh, label top. There was always a trick. If you didn't want to remove this, you opened it up from the bottom. If you wanted to uh, sell this as like a new CD, I probably took the CD out, burned it, put it back in and tried to sell it. Santana, Shaman. This was my very first major label session credit called Why Don't You and I featuring Trad Kroger from Nickelback. One of my now friends played on this record as well. And that being Tim Pierce. So what happened with me was uh, I got a call from the producer Lester Mendez. Uh, I was living in Miami. I was not the first call guy. I think he actually had called two other players that weren't able to come in that day to record. And I was like, heck yeah, I'll record on a Santana record. Uh, I came in there. My amp was a PV Classic 100 that had eight EL84s, 212 cabinet that someone had built. I don't even know what speakers were in it. And my Les Paul. And I had a Schecter Strat. And an acoustic. I think I played acoustic on this too. What I played that made it onto the actual recording, I'm not sure. I remember buying this the day it came out, getting so excited to see my name next to Tim Pierce's name and like next to Lee Sklar, Chester Thompson, and Chad Kroger. Oh, and of course, Carlos Santana. And then many years later, uh, I met Tim and now we're friends and I have his number in my phone. It's great. Oh, I love this record big time. John Hyatt, Bring the Family. Ry Cooter on guitar, uh, Nick Lowe on bass, Jim Keltner on drums. I just want you to hear this guitar solo. It's so melodic and beautiful and totally complements the song perfectly. I mean, it's such a singable melody. Shit, that's a good solo. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little look into my past. If you enjoyed this video, click that thumbs up. Let me know something down in the comments. Share it with your friends, family, old college roommates that never cleaned up after themselves. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, gear demos, guitar lessons, tour vlogs, click that subscribe button. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, Audi 3000. Thank you.